Hey, leader, and welcome to episode number 339 of the L3 Leadership Podcast, where we are obsessed with helping you grow to your maximum potential and to maximize the impact of your leadership. My name is Doug Smith, and I am your host, and today's episode is brought to you by my friends at Baritung Advisors. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here, and I hope that you enjoy our content and become a subscriber. Know that you can also watch all of our episodes over on our YouTube channel as well, so make sure you're subscribed there as well. And if you've been listening to the podcast for a while and it's made an impact on your life, it would mean the world to me if you would leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever app you listen to podcasts through. That really does help us to grow our audience and reach more leaders. So thank you in advance for that. Well, leader, in today's episode, you'll hear a personal lesson by me on bucket lists. I'm going to be talking to you about why you need a bucket list, what your bucket list could look like, and practical ways for you to cross off items off of your bucket list every single year. But before we dive into that, just a few announcements. This episode of the L3 Leadership Podcast is sponsored by Baratung Advisors. The financial advisors at Baratung Advisors help educate and empower clients to make informed financial decisions. You can find out how Baratung Advisors can help you develop a customized financial plan for your financial future by visiting their website at baratungadvisors.com. That's B-E-R-A-T-U-N-G advisors.com. Securities and investment products and services offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC, Baratung Advisors, LPL Financial, and L3 Leadership are separate entities. I also want to thank our sponsor, Henny Jewelers. They're a jeweler owned by my friend and mentor, John Henny. My wife, Laura, and I got our engagement and wedding rings through Henny Jewelers, and we just had a wonderful experience. And not only do they have great jewelry, but they also invest in people. In fact, for every couple that comes in engaged, they give them a book to help them prepare for marriage, and we just love that. So if you're in need of a good jeweler, check out hennyjewelers.com. And with all that being said, let's dive right in. Here's my lesson on bucket lists. Hey, leader, today I'd like to talk to you on the subject of bucket lists. That's right, I said bucket lists. I'm going to be talking to you about why you need one, what they look like. I'll be sharing with you how I structure my bucket list along with several items on my bucket list in hopes that that inspires you. And then I'll be closing up the lesson with talking to you about practical ways that you can actually cross items off of your list every single year. And so let's dive right in. First, I want to talk to you about why you need a bucket list. And to do that, I'll share with you my origin story of how I created my bucket list. And really, uh, it started when I was 17 years old. Um, prior to, to turning 17, growing up, I never really traveled a lot. We went to Disney World once as a family when I was seven, which was an incredible trip. Um, but outside of that, we really didn't travel a lot for family vacations. And I really didn't go outside of Pittsburgh very much. So I really had no idea of how big the world was or what the, the world had to offer. And when I was 17, many of you know, I met my wife. I had a Bible study and her family really brought me into their family. And that's a whole nother story for another podcast. But her dad, uh, my father-in-law, he is the dean of admission at Carnegie Mellon University. And as a result of his job, he's had the opportunity to go all over the world. I mean, he has a map with, with pins in every country that he's been to. And there's actually a very few countries that he hasn't been to. And, uh, and prior to meeting him again, like I said, I never traveled. And fortunately, as a result of you know falling in love with his daughter and being around their family, he started inviting me on on trips with him and his family. And I'll never forget the first uh, trip that he invited me on was a work trip that he had to Washington, D.C., and he invited me and his son on the trip. And it was the first time I had ever seen a big city outside of Pittsburgh, and I was absolutely blown away. I, I fell in love with D.C. And from that moment on, I just remember thinking to myself, like, I want to experience everything that the world has to offer. I want to do everything you could do. I want to see everything you can see. I want to go everywhere that you can go. I want to I want to do it all. And Mike really showed me how big the world was and how much the world had had to offer. And so that's what first got me really excited. You know, I hadn't heard the concept bucket list before. But I'm just really, really grateful that I had a father-in-law who opened up the world to me. You know, throughout the years, Mike continued to take me places. Uh, I'll just list a few. He's taken me to Boston, Bar Harbor, Maine, which is where my wife and I ended up getting married, Park City, Utah, Munich, Germany, Prague. He's taken me to the U.S. Open in New York City. He's taken me to London and we went to Wimbledon. So many life-changing experiences that my father-in-law enabled me to have. And, and I'll talk more about that uh, towards the end, but I'm so, so grateful that I had someone in my life open up the world to me. And I would just challenge you as a leader, you know, maybe you have the world open up to you in the same way that Mike does. Take people along with you. 
Mike taking me with him, changed, taking me with him, changed my life forever. And you can change the life of young leaders in your life if you'll just bring them with you. And again, I'll talk more about that later. But the first reason I started thinking about a bucket list was because I realized and recognized how big the world was and how much there it had to offer. And then I started getting intentional around leadership development. And I heard the story of Lou Holtz. And if you know Lou, he's the famous Notre Dame coach, but his story is famous. And you can Google this. I'll just share the high level details. But when Lou was 28 years old, he was going through sort of a rough patch and he was having dinner with his wife one night. And I think she encouraged him to just make a list of things that he wanted to do before he died. And, and he actually sat down and did that, even though he didn't want to. And he came up with a list of 107 things that he wanted to do before he died. It was a bucket list. And some of the examples of things that were on Lou's bucket list were he wanted to be a guest on The Tonight Show, dine with the president, meet the pope, uh, become coach of Notre Dame's football team and win a national championship. And these were all things that he just wrote down, pie in the sky things of, hey, I have no idea if this will actually ever happen or not, but if I could live the life that I want to live, I would want to do all of these things. Well, if you know the story, uh, at last count that I found, he had accomplished 102 out of the 107 items that he wrote on his bucket list. That's pretty incredible. 102 out of 107. And those are very specific things be a guest on The Tonight Show, win a national championship. Amazing. And when he talks about this experience, he credits it all to writing it down, writing it down, actually having a list and being intentional about it. And so that's where I first got the idea to actually write down a bucket list. And so one, again, going back to writing it down, I think you actually need to physically write it down. It's good. It's great to dream and say, oh, I want to visit this place and visit that place. But until you actually write it down, one, you probably won't remember half of your list. And two, you won't be able to keep it in front of you enough to actually make it internalized and and to go after those items. So the second reason, so first was inspiration. I was inspired that I want to make a list of things I want to do before I die. The second thing is just recognizing that life is short. I've I've shared with you on the podcast before my story, but I lost my mom uh, when I was 17 years old. My mom lived at 55. I lost my mother-in-law shortly after that, two years after that. She was 47 years old, so young. Um, And many of you know, I recently lost my sister, uh, unfortunately, to an overdose, but she was 32 years old. And, And I just realized at a very early age, unfortunately, through loss, that life is short. And just a few things I want to share with you on this because I want to urge you to create a bucket list. But here's a quote that I've always loved. Someone wrote this. They wrote, first, I was dying to finish high school and to start college. And then I was dying to finish college and start working. And then I was dying to marry and have children. And then I was dying to, for my children to grow old enough for school so I could return to work. And then I was dying to retire. And now I'm dying. And suddenly I, I realize I forgot to live. I forgot to live. And, and I never want that to be me. And the reality is we can get so focused on trying to get to the next season of our life that our life really can pass us by. You know, one of the sobering stories that, that I'm always reminded of, I have a friend, um, that's a bit older. And, and unfortunately, he lost his wife um, to cancer. It was either in their late 50s or, or early 60s. And I remember having lunch with this man and we were just talking about that and we were processing that together and, and tears filled his eyes. And he said, Doug, if there's anything you want to do with your wife, do it now. He said, because me and my wife, we kept saving and putting away and saving and putting away and saving and putting away for all of these things that we wanted to do once we retired, once we were in our 60s and 70s. And, and we never got to do it. He said, please do it. I mean, I'm almost tearing up now. I mean, I could, I could just see the conversation all over again. And, and it just, again, hit me with that sense of urgency of, hey, none of us are promised tomorrow. And so I want to make a bucket list of things that I can do today and do have as much fun as I can to do. I want to have as many experiences with Laura that I can today. I want to have as many experiences as I can with my kids today. And of course, I hope I live to be 100 plus years old and see my great, great grandchildren. But none of us are promised tomorrow, and so I want to make the most of life today. One of my favorite quotes of all time that I share very often is from Mae West. She said this. She said, you only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. I'll say that again. So good. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. And that's why you need a bucket list. Having a bucket list helps your one life, has your one shot at life, and enables you to do it right because you're able to tackle things that you just dream of and and want to do before you die. So 
that's why I would encourage you to have a bucket list. One, the world is huge and it has so much to offer. And if you're not intentional about going after it, you're going to miss out on a ton of things. And number two, life is short. We're, we're, even if we live to 100 plus years, it's just going to go by in the blink of an eye. And so we need to be extremely intentional and not put off things till tomorrow that we can do today. So that's why you should have a bucket list. Um, so let's dive into what a bucket list actually looks like and how I structure mine. For me, it's, a, it's evolved over the years. So again, I just want to encourage you, just make a list. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just start writing down things that you want to do. But I found that as I revisit mine every year, I eventually wanted to categorize mine by category. So all I'm going to do with you is share with you the categories of my bucket list, and then I'll share with you a few items in it for inspiration. And so the first uh, list, the first category in my bucket list is family. Now, again, these all seem like simple things. And, and I wrote some things that we've already done and then other things that we haven't done yet. But for family, I want to have four kids who are all living for God. And when they grow up, they actually want to spend time together and with us, being meaning Laura and I. We want to have our children marry, marry awesome, godly spouses. And so we pray about that all the time. We want our children to become independent. We want to meet and help raise our grandchildren and our great-great-grandchildren. We want to have annual two-week vacations. That was on the bucket list for a long time. We weren't able to do it. Now we're in a place where we can do it. Amazing. But again, these are just some examples. What are some things that you want to accomplish with your family before you die? And a lot of them, again, will carry over into other categories, as you'll see. Another category is education. Uh, now, for those of you who know me, this is a very high on my list, but I do think it would be cool to get a master's and doctor degree. My hope is on my bucket list that they're honorary. <laughs> and so I don't actually have to go through the schooling, uh, but we'll see. So if anyone out there is listening and can hook me up with an honorary master's and doctor degree, uh, let me know. And that'll be a lot of fun. But I do think it would be cool to get both of those. Another category is career. So just a few examples that I wrote down here. I would love to become the CEO or an executive director of an organization. I'd love to speak at several Fortune 500 companies. I'd love to speak in front of 10,000 people one day. I'd love to speak to, to major sports teams. And again, some of these things have already happened, which is amazing. I'd love to have a leadership podcast that reaches over 100,000 people. Um, that's a, a goal. I want to write a book and become a New York Times bestselling author. These are all things that I want to do before I die in my career. The next category is physical. So again, a few physical goals. I want to run 10 marathons. So I've already run seven towards that goal. I plan on knocking out the other three uh, in my 40s at some point when my kids are a little bit older. I want to complete a half or full Ironman. This is broad, but I want to be healthy and fit enough to do whatever I'd like to do when I'd like to do it uh, at any time. And of course, I want to live a long life as well. And so I want to, to, to discipline myself with what I eat in my health and fitness to live a long time. Another category is financial. So financial, a long time on the bucket list is to work through Dave Ramsey's baby steps. So if you know those, it was getting out of debt, having three to six months savings, but getting a down payment saved up for a house, uh, actually purchasing a house, and then completing you know and working on baby steps four, five, and six, which includes another bucket list item, which is paying off our mortgage. Uh, for me, it's in, in 10 years or less. And I want to actually go on the Dave Ramsey show after we pay off our mortgage. And I want to hear Dave say, I'm looking at weird people. <laughs> so if you listen to Dave, you've heard him say that before. It's on my bucket list. What's up? Uh, we want to give away over $1 million in our lifetime. Uh, we want to have a net worth of over $10 million. Um, and we want to be able to spend at least $10,000 a year on vacations. So again, these are all dreams, but these are all just things that, that we want to do before we die. So dream big. This is your list. Make it your own. Another category is possessions. So Laura and I aren't really possession people. We really like experiences over possessions, but we want to own a home. So um, you know, we've checked that off of our bucket list. Uh, I put potentially own another home, like a vacation home. I don't know if that's us or not, uh, but I have it on there just to keep it in front of me. Um, and this sounds may sound cheesy, but we want to have a nice home gym. Um, I really want that. And I want to have a podcast studio or a nice office in our house. So those are both things that we're working at currently. But again, not a ton on the possession. You know, I did write things on there like own a yacht and all these things, but I'm like, in reality, would I really want that? I don't know. So owning a yacht is on there <laughs> if you care, but, um, but I don't know that I'll ever cross that off. All right. Events. These are all things that I want to do. So what do I want to attend? I want to attend a Super Bowl. 
I want to attend all four majors in tennis. So I've knocked off two of those already. I've been to Wimbledon and the US Open, as I mentioned. So I still need to get to the French and the Australian. So if anyone out there is listening on any of these items and you can help me, let me know. Other events, um, I want to attend an award show. Uh, The one we've been looking at recently is the Country Music Awards because we love country music. So that could be fun. I want to go to a Final Four game. And I want to go to a World Series game as well. So those are just some examples of some events that I would like to attend before I die. Travel and experiences. So this is the biggest category on my bucket list. But here's some, uh, here's some items on there. I want to fly in an Air Force jet. Come on. I would love to speak at an Ivy League college graduation. And again, I'll put in parentheses where they award me an honorary degree. <laughs> uh, anyway. Sorry. I want to get mentored by well-known leaders around the world. I want to take a one-year sabbatical with my family. Um, I want to eat as, at as many two- and three-star Michelin star rated restaurants as we can. I want to visit all the presidential libraries. I've been able to check off two of those. I visited Ronald Reagan's and Jimmy Carter's, both awesome experiences. Uh, we want to visit all the major national parks and complete their most epic hikes. Uh, I want to climb all the major mountains, Mount Kilimanjaro. I want to summit Mount Rainier. Um, I, I put sail in the, the Nile River, the Amazon River, the Congo, etc. I want to walk on the Great Wall of China. I want to see the pyramids of Egypt. And I want to visit the Promised Land. And this is just a side asterisk. I want to get baptized by John Maxwell in the Jordan River. Um, I have a friend that, that actually works for John and got to go on a trip to Israel with him. And he got baptized by John in the Jordan River. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> How did I not get the invite? Um, but that would be a bucket list experience for me. People to meet is another category. Um, so again, I've been able to check off a lot of people because of this podcast. So I'm very grateful for that. But people that when I when I say meet, it's not like hey, I met them in a book signing and they signed my book. It means like I've had you know at least one hour of an in depth conversation with them where I got to know them on a, on a whole different level. So some people on that list right now are Dave Ramsey. Would love to connect with him. He's been on my bucket list for a long time to interview. Ed Milet is a recent addition. Uh, if you haven't listened to the Ed Milet show, he's awesome. I just love his personality. Earl McManus, I've been a huge Earl fan for years and uh, would love to spend time with him. Craig Rochelle. And I'd love to have dinner or have a, an experience with the president of the United States of America. Very similar to Lou Holtz. I think that's a really cool thing to add to your list. Um, so that's a category. And that's actually the last category uh, that I left on here. But I hope that, that some of those items, one, inspire you in those categories. And again, I would just encourage you, the important thing is just start making a list. And you can just make it in a Word document. You can make it in your journal. Um, but just start making it. And again, I, you, I'll share my list with you. So if, if you just want to copy my bucket list and, and take it and run with it, you can do that as well. And the only other thing I would add when it comes to, to making your bu- bucket list and what it could look like is always be adding to your bucket list. Uh, my bucket list is something I review probably twice a year. At the end of the year, I review it seriously and just try to think about new items to add um, and then what I can accomplish in the next year. But always be adding. You know, In the podcast, you'll notice in my lightning round, I always ask people, hey, what's something that you have done that you think everyone should do before they die? And what I'm looking there for there is items to add to my bucket list. And I've actually added a lot to my bucket list based on people's responses. So it's a great question to ask people. You can actually ask people if they have a bucket list. And if they do, you can say, hey, would you mind sharing that with me? I would love to see your bucket list. So always be adding it. And then I would also add this. I put use social media for inspiration, not comparison. You know, I remember when social media first came out and people were always like, oh, people just use that to brag and post pictures of where they've gone. And um, I think a lot of times people saw that as a way to compare themselves to other people and be jealous of other people's experiences for whatever reason. And again, I wasn't having all these great experiences at the time. I saw it as inspiration. I'm like, oh my gosh, that person got to do that. Like maybe I can do that one day and, and then actually try to figure out uh, a way to do it. So I actually use other people's social media uh, highlight reels, uh, so to speak, as inspiration to add to my bucket list. So it's a great way to change a mindset as well. So we've talked about why you need a bucket list. We've talked about what your bucket list could look like. Let's finish up with talking about how you can continually check items off of your list. So number one is is plan to live long. Plan to live long. Uh, And this is um, something I got from Dan Sullivan, who leads Strategic Coach. He has an ebook called My Plan to Live to 156. It's actually a great read. If you just Google Dan Sullivan, My Plan to, to Live to 156, you can find it. 
But he basically, you know, I think he's 75 years old and he's like, hey, I'm only halfway through my life. And that's how he's planning his life out. And I think if, you know, even though life is short, if you plan to live long, you can be really, really intentional with your life. And and his advice to you is to basically look at your, your life in 25-year increments, 25 years at a time. And so what I got out of Dan Sullivan's exercise, I actually create a timeline in my journal and I write out 25 years. And then I look over my bucket list and I basically just start filling in experiences based on when I think life events are going to happen. So I do put things in the timeline of, hey, you know, Olivia will start college this year. And hey, this is when we'll start our empty nester years, uh, et cetera. And then I look over my bucket list of the experiences that we want to have and the vacations we want to take. And I try to fill them in accordingly. Now, again, it's just a, it's just a rough game plan. It doesn't mean that that's exactly how things are going to happen, but at least I'm being intentional and I can get a 25 foot, uh, an 80,000 foot view of a 25 year span in my life and get really excited about what I'll be able to accomplish and the things I'll be able to experience as a result. So plan to live long. And I would encourage you to try to make a 25 year timeline of the next 25 years in your life and start to, to fill in your bucket list items accordingly. The next thing I would tell you to do to cross off items is to incorporate your bucket list into your annual goals. So, you know, if you've been on the podcast or you're part of L3 for a while, you know, I'm really big on year end reviews and setting goals for the next year and then reviewing your goals on a weekly basis. Well, every year when I set my annual goals, I bring out my bucket list and I look through them and I said, realistically, are there, you know, one to five items on this bucket list that I know we could, we could cross off this year if we're just intentional? And then I try to build them into the calendar just like I would any other goal. So make them part of your annual goals and then plan it. Next, look for opportunities to complete bucket list items. So that may come up throughout the year. That may sound similar, but let me tell you what I mean. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to make this happen, but I had a work trip and I got to go to San Antonio, Texas and... Um, in June. And I wasn't far from three of the presidential libraries. Now, unfortunately, timing wise, I didn't plan it right, but I could have scheduled an extra day or two and probably knocked a few of those off of my list. So look over your calendar. Are there any work trips? Are you going anywhere? Are you going out of town? Are you going on vacation? And some of these bucket list items are only an hour away from where you are. That's a great way to start crossing items off of your list. And also take advantage of three-day weekends. You know, if, if you have a three-day weekend and you added a fourth day, could you go somewhere and take a short trip and start knocking some of these items off of your list? Could you go to a nice restaurant, et cetera? So just always be looking for opportunities to cross uh, items off. Uh, I put review your list often. Again, I do it once or twice a year, but again, keep it in front of you because as you do, you'll start to see more and more opportunities to cross items off. And then lastly, uh, very well, oh, second to last, uh, very similar to what I said in, in my last episode, but don't ask, how am I going to do these things? Ask who. <laughs> don't ask, how am I going to do these things? Ask who. What do I mean by that? Well, as you look over your items, start to think about like, who could help me figure out how to do this. Who, who, who knows something about Michelin star rated restaurants? Who knows something about traveling to all these places or traveling on a budget, et cetera? There are experts who have already done all the work for you. I think so many times we look at our bucket list and we can get overwhelmed and intimidated because it's like, well, how am I going to afford this? Uh, how am I going to figure this out? How do I know what the best experiences are? There are people who have done what you want to do. I can promise you. So find them. Maybe it's a travel agent, uh, whatever it is, but ask people how they do it or what they would do. And again, again, I think some of these things you might be like, oh, it's going to cost a fortune. You can do a lot of these things uh, for a very little amount of money if you're just intentional. But a lot of people just don't know that because they've never taken the time to research. Um, and so take advantage of people who are experts. I also wrote, work with your financial advisor. You know, obviously this stuff does cost money, so it's not like it's free, but talk to your financial advisor and say, hey, you know, my bucket list, for instance, for Laura and I, hey, we want to take a two year vac or two week vacation every year. Um, and we think it'll cost X. How can we build a financial plan that gets us to a place where we're able to spend what we need to spend to stay away for, to go away for two weeks? And your financial advisor can actually help you put together a financial plan that every year you're able to do what you want for vacation. So, um, so that's it. Always ask who, not how. And then the last, and this, the last one, and this is the the secret sauce that I would say. But very, very simple. And again, for those listening, I am a person of faith, and so I wrote, ask God to open up doors for you 
and to give you bucket list experiences you couldn't even dream of. I'll say that one more time. Ask God to open up doors for you and to give you bucket list experiences that you couldn't even dream of. And that's the beautiful thing about God. And I'm not saying God is a genie and will grant your every wish, but I have found that God delights in, in meeting the desires of your heart. And if you'll just pray, you know, everywhere I go, I just say, God, open up awesome doors, connect me with awesome people, open up doors for awesome experiences. And, uh, and I just pray for that. And God's continued to do that in my life and, and literally has enabled me to experience things where I just say, I can't believe, like, how did I even end up in this room? How did I get this experience? And the reality is the answer to all, my entire bucket list, any item getting crossed off is God is very, very good. And I'm very, very grateful for him. And lastly, uh, I guess that was the last one, but I would also encourage you help other people accomplish items on their bucket list. You know, I, t- I started the episode talking about my father-in-law, Mike, and my father-in-law, Mike, has enabled me to have so many of the dreams of my heart come true. And I'm so grateful for that. And as I always ask him, hey, Mike, what are some ways that I can pay you back? Is there anything I could do to serve you? And he always says the same thing. He said, Doug, uh, there's going to there's going to be people that come across your path that are in the same situation that you were in when I met you. Just do for them what I did for you. And, you know, I would just encourage you, who in your life can you create bucket list experiences for? You know, maybe there's a a friend that you have, uh, one of your kid's friends uh, could come along on vacation for you and, and they don't get to travel much like I didn't get to. You could change their life forever by just bringing them with you. So bring people with you on your bucket list adventures. And that's it. So I hope that this inspired you. I hope that you know the world is your oyster. Uh, Dream big and go for it. Go see everything you can see. Do everything you can do and go everywhere you can go. And just remember this, that you only live once. But if you do it right and you have a bucket list, (laughs) once is enough. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll talk to you next time. Have a good one. Hey, Leader, thank you so much for listening to my lesson on bucket lists. I hope it added value to your life. You can find links to everything that I discussed in the lesson in the show notes at l3leadership.org forward slash 339. And as always, Leader, I want to challenge you. The new year is coming up. And if you want to 10x your growth next year, then you need to either launch or join an L3 Leadership Mastermind Group. Mastermind groups have been the greatest source of growth in my life over the last seven years. And if you don't know what they are, they're just simply groups of six to 12 leaders that meet together on a consistent basis in order to help each other grow, hold each other accountable, and to do life together. So if you're interested in learning more about masterminds, go to l3leadership.org forward slash masterminds. And as always, I like to end every episode with a quote. And today I'll read you a quote that I read in a Life is Good book. And it just simply said this, everything is a once in a lifetime experience. It's one of my favorite quotes. Everything is a once in a lifetime experience. Leader, know that Laura and I love you. We believe in you. And we say it every episode, don't quit. Keep leading. The world desperately needs your leadership. Go make a difference and we'll talk to you next episode.